Hello everyone, this is Taylor Edrington with Royal Boar Janglers in Canyon City, Colorado. The oldest fly shop and guide service on the Arkansas River and only Orvis endorsed outfitter on the Arkansas. Thanks so much for viewing. Uh, this is a video update uh, focusing on the fly fishing in Bighorn Sheep Canyon and upstream as well as the Canyon City area on uh, uh, particularly the 102 mile gold medal section on the Arkansas River. So there's a lot of great things going on right now. Today is April the 20th, uh, 21st, excuse me. Uh, and uh, we are now moving into what we think will be the heavy, heavy caddis activity um, that we can expect to see uh, here in the next few weeks. Uh, and um, basically give you a little bit of a timeline on what's happened with the caddis stuff uh, thus far. Uh, this last week before uh, the uh, large storm that hit the front range um, that cooled things down statewide, we had caddis activity up to about the Salt Lick uh, area, which is um, about the middle of the lower part of Bighorn Sheep Canyon. Um, and uh, so pretty heavy activity from about Parkdale up to Salt Lick. Um, and uh, kind of featuring about a, a 15 to 18 mile section of the river. Um, and then that storm hit um, and changed things dramatically. Obviously, you know, the, the first thing to occur is a decrease in water temperature. And so we kind of moved back um, more towards a BWO life cycle focus on the entire river for about four to five days and uh, you know great productivity fish were still feeding hard um, and uh, you know we did see uh, some small influxes of uh, low-level snow melt so some short slugs of you know potentially off-color water um, moving through however today as of Thursday the 21st we've got great clarity from Parktail all the way up and the vast majority, I would say 90% of that low level snow has melted. And um, so I believe we're, you know, uh, fairly in the clear as uh, far as that is concerned, um, as far as any influx of uh, low level snow and uh, any, you know, small cells of off colored water moving through. I think we've seen the majority of that happen already. Um, so we can expect great conditions, most likely, um, for the foreseeable future, um, and the long-term forecast is not really showing any, uh, you know, particular uh, heavy snowfall or anything of that sort in the next two weeks. We um, are expecting for the higher mountains to get some snowfall this weekend, however, um, that is kind of the extent of it. Um, so, uh, long story short, here in uh, the last few days, we've seen um, a huge upturn in uh, water temperature, uh, you know, after the storm. And yesterday we saw mid 50 degree water temps in Lower Bighorn Sheep Canyon and a reappearance of the strong caddis activity uh, that kind of left off um, last week. So yesterday we saw some pretty fair sized hatches through about the Texas Creek area, heavier downstream in the Parkdale area, Parkdale to Spike Buck. Um, and so what we expect for the next few days, you know, with a dramatic warm up here you know, we're going to see, we saw mid-60s yesterday, we're going to see near 70 degrees in Canyon City um, here today, and then mid-70s uh, through Sunday, uh, we should see some of the best caddis activity, uh, you know, that we're going to see in the lower Bighorn Sheep Canyon area uh, through the weekend. So um, expect very good fishing on caddis life cycle stuff, which I'll show you here. Uh, shortly and um, 
you know, do see, you know, still that that focus on stone fly nymphs, VWO nymphs, VWO mergers, and caddis larvae in the mornings as things get going, and probably more hatch focus in uh, the early afternoon through evening time period. Um, flows are currently um, hovering around 350 CFS uh, at the Wells Bow gauge. Uh, we did have finally an increase in contribution out of Twin Lakes um, with uh, you know a little bit more snowpack. Now we're at about 90 to 95 percent of average uh, on the drainage so they did start releasing about 50 CFS out of Twin Lakes to get us to 350 which will be a, a great weightable flow still fairly low you know uh, for floating but floating is an option Waiting is definitely your best option uh, moving forward through the spring, in our opinion. Um, so let's take a look at rigging. Like I said, don't forget um, your BWO life cycle. Uh, you know, day in, day out, you could have good um, to great BWO activity um, from the nymph through the adult in you know full life cycle. And then your caddis activity is going to be primarily in Lower Bighorn Sheep Canyon um, from, say, Cotopaxi downstream this weekend and through next week, most likely. Um, so that's kind of what you would want to focus on potentially in the afternoons um, based on what happens on a day-to-day -day basis uh, in that section. Uh, but what we do recommend is a continuation of, um, you know, really, uh, you know, your nymph uh, setups in the morning, um, staying fairly deep, and, uh, you know, then as uh, bug activity uh, increases throughout the day, moving up in the water column, uh, you know, mid-water column to subsurface film, and then on the surface, uh, with dries if you've got adults and fish king to them. So in the mornings, we're still running stoneflies. You know, we have seen a, a great, um, you know, uh, bit of productivity on rubber leg stones. Smaller gold and smaller dark rubber leg stones have really been productive in the last uh, three to four days. Um, the, the uh, 20 incher that we tie here locally that Larry Kingry does for us has been very productive um, and has been since March, really. CDC um, print snip, the CDC version in particular, just really buggy, moves a lot. Um, that's been a great lead uh, stonefly nymph. And a little bit more on the, you know, um, realistic side of things, uh, the wired stonefly has been a, a good uh, stone as well to run as a lead fly in a western rig or a point fly in a euro rig. <clears throat> and uh, before we go into caddis life cycle, um, you know, I'd like to feature a couple of BWO imitations. Like I said, don't leave those at home. BWOs will continue to be you know, very productive, um, like your pocket water, um, beta nymph there. Um, we, again, really like CDC here. It moves really well. It's very buggy. Um, the CDC pheasant tail, another really good fly there. Um, moving into the BWO merger, um, which has really been kind of the key life cycle stage for our guides. Uh, the Iceberg Vetus continues to be a great fly. That's Larry Kingry's pattern. The Batwing Vetus, another breadwinner for us. That's the Batwing Vetus. Those are both featuring CDC. And then um, we've done very well with Purple uh, Emergers. So Purple Juju Vetus, size 18 and 20. Going to be a great productive fly for you. And then your BWO dry, um, still having hatches even on bright days, um, you know, going to be a productive life cycle stage for you. Um, 
Ken Morse's May Day. This is a new fly that has done extremely well for us. Um, tied on a little bit different competition hook, size 17 and 19. Um, so kind of odd sizes there, but great fly. Um, and then the Hackle Stacker, another fantastic fly there. And um, so that kind of covers your BW, BWO life cycle stuff. Um, like I said, we've been fishing BWO uh, nymphs and emergers in the mornings. Um, below a stone fly and running a caddis larva as a middle fly and a three fly rig. Um, so moving into the caddis life cycle stuff, like I said, we're fishing uh, caddis larva um, typically in the morning um, through midday and that metallic larva uh, is a great friend dish in that we tie here locally. Um, fantastic fly of Larry Kingrees. Another um, caddis larva representation that's a breadwinner really year-round for us is the chartreuse copper john. So that's been a, a fantastic fly and really a size 16 um, and 18 and we've been fishing 14s for the free swimming caddis larva that we are seeing in the water column. Um, so just, just a, a little education on the caddis profile. Um, you know, basically the hatch that we're experiencing, you know, um, currently, um, you know, the big, big tax day hatch or what some will call Mother's Day hatch, which is incorrect. Um, you know, the big tax day hatch is the Brachycentris oxygen talus. That's the black caddis, size 16, and some are 18s. Um, however, we do have a large pop population of free swimming caddis in this river, which we've seen hatching sporadically for the last month or so. And you will see some of those hatching uh, at the same time as these brockies. Uh, so those are going to be bigger and more olive bodies, uh, where the brockies will be the black bodies. Um, so on the Brachycentris life cycle, we've got the larva, which I just showed you, which you can run in a nymph rig. You've got um, then uh, a weighted emerger pattern, which will be your pupa deeper in the water column. Um, hot wire caddis, beadhead, tungsten, one of our favorites. Um, uh, the nitro caddis, uh, fantastic fly here on this river. Beadhead tungsten and the prime time caddis, uh, another beadhead pupa imitation. Okay. And all of those were fishing a little bit deeper in the water column. You can run them under a larger dry, um, maybe a, a small stimulator or a foam bodied caddis, um, as long as it's buoyant enough. Or you can run it deep uh, under a stone fly, say you're seeing. A few bugs popping. Uh, you can run that deeper under a stonefly. If you're seeing more bugs and some fish up, you can run it under a dry, like I said, kind of in the subsurface film. Um, if you're seeing a lot of bugs hatching and a lot of fish up, though, we tend to change to a non weighted emerger um, trailing behind a caddis dry. And those non weighted emergers can be something like this edible emerger. It's one of our favorites, uh, has that nice wing case popped, um, a little bit of uh, elk hair, um, short elk hair wing on that one, and La Fontaine's Deep Sparkle Pupa non-weighted. So we'll take that non-weighted merger and run it under a actual adult um, caddis, being the black foam caddis, uh, which is a mainstay on this river, Larry Kingry's Better Foam Black Caddis. Um, another great um, black caddis is the Durangler's Peacock Caddis, uh, and we're running those in size 14 and 16, um, and so we'll take that and run the non-weighted emerger 14 to 16 inches back, fluorocarbon, so it's just in the surface film, just under the surface, and then dry on top, so you do get that double, double rig and, um, you know, um, kind of show, show fish what they want there. Um, and it's important to recognize that during heavy hatches that 
the majority of the fish are actually feeding on trapped emergers in the subsurface film. So it's important to recognize that you do need that caddis pupa in combination with the caddis dry. Um, many folks will catch plenty of fish on the caddis dry as a single, um, but if you really want to catch a lot of fish during a heavy hatch, which we'll most likely see in the, the coming days here, um, you know, you, you will do much better. You will be a lot more productive with that double rig with the adult and the non-weighted pupa underneath. Um, in the evenings, we are already seeing egg layer activity in the Lower Canyon and in Canyon City. As the hatch progresses and matures, then you will see more of that activity in the evenings. Sometimes that can be the best uh, single dry fly activity that you can see during the caddis hatch. Sometimes you'll see egg layer activity in the mornings as well. And so the egg layer is a really important pattern and it is different than the adult pattern in that it has an egg um, sac imitation uh, shade variation uh, at the butt of the fly, at the end of the fly there. Um, and this is Larry Kingry's egg layer with the purple body chartreuse butt. And then Larry Kingry's little hottie, which has the foam post integrated um, another fantastic egg layer pattern. And the final life cycle stage is the spent caddis. Many times when we're fishing egg layers we will fish the spent uh, as a trailer um, because as those females oviposit that egg sac into the water column then they immediately become a spent caddis. Essentially the wings um, are what's left of the bug and um, you know, in many t scenarios, you'll find a lot of these spent caddis in eddies um, and uh, you know scum lines, and you'll find feeding fish that really focus on those spent caddis. This is a partridge wing spent Lawson's pattern, and then we have Larry King Reese spent, which was designed for this river. Okay, so that should well cover. Um, you know, not only what we're doing in the mornings with stoneflies, BWO nymphs, BWO emergers, and dries. Uh, you know, a lot of times you'll see those BWO hatches in the afternoon as well. Um, but also covering the full caddis life cycle, which like I said, it's going to be very prevalent and especially lower Bighorn Sheep Canyon over the next week, 10 days. And uh, moving up from there gradually, um, you know, one of the things I will say about the caddis hatch is once the caddis have hatched in a certain area, they continue to hatch in those areas. Um, sometimes the hatch um, levels out a little bit. You know, you don't have those giant blowout hatches, but really you don't want those giant blowout hatches if you want to catch a lot of fish. If there are too many naturals on the water, fish are gorging themselves and they're pretty tough to, to catch at that point. So we want, you know, medium sized hatches, enough bugs to get fish keyed, um, and enough bugs to really get fish on emergers. Um, and if you really want to have big number days, focusing on the beadhead emerger, the pupa, um, in a beadhead form or non bead form is the way to go. Um, so again, as the hatch progresses, it will move upstream and you will have hatch, hatch activity, you know, potentially in early May near the Salida area, potentially earlier. Um, but again, caddis hatch activity maintains in Bighorn Sheep Canyon. So don't chase the hatch, so to speak. Um, once caddis activities occurred, it will continue. Um, and, you know, uh, fishing the hatch down in Bighorn Sheep Canyon, um, you know, into May can be very, very productive. Fishing the caddis life cycle into May, even in Canyon City, is very productive. Um, you know, and, and of course, uh, you know, taking some trips up to Salida and the Upper River can be very productive as well on certain years. But on other years, you know, the more uh, prevalent hatch activity occurs in Bighorn Sheep Canyon and, and um, 
really doesn't make it heavily above Salida uh, and you know before runoff hits. So keep that in mind as you plan uh, for where you're fishing on the Arkansas. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention is that uh, streamer activity is uh, really very, very productive right now. Uh, over the course of the last three to four days, we've really hit um, a window of very aggressive activity uh, for these trout um, in Bighorn Sheep Canyon and upstream. And so we are fishing a lot of um, tandem streamer rigs right now. Um, and whether you're out of the boat or waiting, they're both good tactics. Um, two that we really like as lead flies, um, they're both um, Charlie Craven's Baby Gonga, just in different colors. We've done well in his new rainbow with his new rainbow Baby Gonga, as well as his tan and yellow Baby Gonga as a lead fly. And then running um, trailers behind that, like your Thin Mint. Um, that's a fantastic fly. Your tungsten uh, black woolly booger, uh, and then your tungsten cone slump buster, which is always just a mainstay, olive black and rust on that fly. So we've covered a lot. Um, like I said, conditions are excellent on the river right now. Um, 350 CFS essentially in Bighorn Sheep Canyon. That won't change much. Uh, unless we release a touch more water based on what happens with snowpack over the next 10 days, which would be fine. We love the river at 350 to 450 CFS uh, during this time period, potentially even 500. Um, so we are at the low end of that, um, which is uh, a productive level right now. Um, caddis activity, again, is uh, really firing up now, and uh, you can expect great uh, productivity on the life cycle of the caddis for the next, you know, two to three weeks on the Arkansas. And uh, again, don't forget your BWO life cycle and stonefly nymphs uh, as you uh, try to complement every, uh, you know, timeline throughout the day um, based on what bug activity is going on. So um, if you do have any questions, feel free to give us a call toll-free, 888-994-6743, or shoot us an email at info at royalgorgeanglers.com. Uh, we do have some availability, very slim availability for guides. If you are interested in uh, guided services on the Arkansas River, obviously we're the oldest fly shop and guide service and only Orvis endorsed outfitter on this river, so do uh, feel free to give us a call to uh, inquire about availability. Um, thanks so much for viewing. Uh, hopefully this is helpful for you as you prepare for the caddis hatch activity and other great um, productivity on the Arkansas River. Uh, we hope to see you stop by the fly shop on your way up the river. And again, please let us know if you have any questions and have a fantastic day on the water.